Hi everyone, um, thank you for joining us today and today we're talking about how to come to Australia as a nurse and uh, this is a very impactful session that I'm looking forward to. Um, if you're new here, this is my name is Anna, I'm my and Dr. Mom and uh, in this session, um, this new session that uh, we're bringing forth to you guys is stories that impact, stories that provide hope and stories that um, you know that can influence you if you're thinking about uh, coming and living and working in Australia this is uh, this is what you need today and I would urge you to you know just sit back even as I introduce my guest from today and I must say my guest from today is an amazing girl she has walked um, she's walked uh, the walk and she's um, going to talk to us about how she did it and like I always say every person has their own 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 story of how they came to Australia how they did it and it's just amazing to sit back and listen to 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 uh, Cheryl's story so without talking too much about it I'm going to introduce Cheryl to you guys and yeah and let her just uh, introduce herself and tell us a little bit more about her welcome Cheryl thank you very much Dr. Harry. Uh, first of all, I'm really honored being here. My name is Sherry Nyabera. I am a mother, I am a wife, and I'm, above all, I'm a registered nurse working, and, uh, working in Australia. Yes, I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. Guys, I actually asked Cheryl <laughs> to come and join me, I think just the other day, and it's amazing. That just tells you how big a heart uh, Cheryl has. It's just amazing that she was just like, Dr. Aria will come. So it's really an honor to sit down with you, just have a chat and <laughs> talk, really. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Without, you know, you know, let's just jump into it. Um, yep. Someone may be wondering uh, what your migration story is. And mm -hmm. by that is just, you know, walk, walk, walk us through how you came, what made you come. And yes. from there to now. So how things have been. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so my Australian story, my immigration story, it's just gonna, I'm gonna go from way, way back when I was young. Mm -hmm. It was just a dream. I remember being very, like when I was very young, my sisters used to tell me that, I always used to tell them that I'm not gonna live in this country, I'm always gonna go somewhere, but I never really know, I never knew where it was. So, uh, but the dream of being a nurse, it started like still from way, way back. I remember in class, everybody was like, the, the teacher would ask, who wants to be a doctor? Who wants to be a lawyer? Everyone would just be shooting their arms up. But I'm like, where is nursing? No one is saying about <laughs> nursing. But I was, yeah, I always knew I was going to be a nurse. Mm. So I actually started actualizing my dream after I finished my nursing school because I did my nursing school in Mata Hospital. Mm -hmm. So that's when I, I had to start really f following my dreams mm -hmm. and uh, like any other dream you have to decide which country you want to go to I had an option to go into America or the UK and Australia but mm -hmm. thank God I had a friend of mine who was in Australia mm -hmm. and she was willing to walk me through all this path mm -hmm. and uh, so we started with an English exam yeah so before you get any admission to for because the only way for me to come to Australia I had to go back to school because back home I was a registered nurse with a diploma. We did like Kenya registered nurse and midwifery. Mm -hmm. So we had to come back to school to do like a conversion course. So how long was your Kenyan? So it, it took me four years. Three years of basic nursing and one year of midwifery. Okay. So I studied for four years in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So but I was still like a diploma nurse. They're both two diplomas. Yeah. So but Australia was giving us an option of coming to do a conversion okay. course which is just a one-year course, and it's going to be like a degree course. And how long had you worked for? Ah, for a while. Because I worked in Kenya since 20, 2011 to roughly around 10 years. Oh, yeah. Good amount that was, yeah, it was a good mm -hmm. amount of experience back home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so I did my English exam, which mm -hmm. the requirements by that time was to I have to get like a band 777 in mm -hmm. reading, speaking, mm -hmm. writing and listening. Mm -hmm. And I the first time, of course, <laughs> I failed. And then I had to do the exam again because, come on, I'm not giving up. No, <laughs> and that's the spirit. <laughs> no, anything. Up, no. no, have to do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So I did the second time and then I passed mm -hmm. and then I applied for the school. Oh. Yeah. There's a few things that the school needed, like they had to, you had to show you have the financial cap capability, so they mm -hmm. needed like a bank statement. Mm -hmm. For me, they needed a, a, a little bit l a larger amount in the account because I was leaving my family back at home. So you have to show them that you're able to actually, your family back at home are still going to survive even with you being away from you. So I had to show a bank statement of about 5.5 million. Wow. Yes, <laughs> but wow. that was not my money. <laughs> <laughs> remember, you know, I remember, I remember in Kenya, they yeah, were, you yeah. know, nursing, mm -hmm. you know, not even nursing, even as a doctor, then, yeah. uh, you know, that's not easy money to oh, just find now in a bank it's account not. somewhere. So. Yeah, but thank God I had a family, my family, one of my family, my grandfather had that money and he was willing to support me through the whole process. Oh, yeah, mm. and then the school fees paying and all my husband supported me as well a lot. Okay. Yes. So when you say you came and did the conversion, mm -hmm. can you, is there like a formal, if somebody was looking to, you know, look into this, is there something specific they need to check online or uh, what's that pathway called? And, and please talk to us about other pathways like yeah. working in Australia. Sure. So for the, uh, for the conversion course, you just have to, one of the best, uh, one of the, uh, the requirements they have, they look at is you have to have to be a registered nurse back home. Mm -hmm. And then they'll definitely have a look at your transcripts okay. so that they know which units they're going to exclude from your, from your next course. So mm -hmm. That is why it's a very short course. It's just one year course. Because when you do Kenya Registered Nursing and Midwifery, you've already covered so much. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to repeat that in your degree. So that's why it's a very shorter course. But another pathway for you to come and do nursing is basically for the young ones, the ones who've just mm -hmm. come from school, like oh, high school, they've just finished school. Yeah. You can just apply directly to the university and mm -hmm. you'll, for you, you'll have to do like a three-year course, a bachelor's course. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you, what you need to do, you start with this, like for the ECU, there's Edith Kowan University. Mm -hmm. It provides an ECC course for like nine months. And then you do, it's like a diploma, a small okay. diploma for nine months. And then you do your degree for two years. Um, so which okay. makes your course like a little, a little bit, bit shorter, shorter compared to the whole three years. Okay. Uh, but you also have an option of just doing the whole degree for three years directly mm -hmm. into the uni. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the ones who are already in Australia, like let's say if someone is doing a different type of course and they want to change into nursing, so long as you have something like a degree in any, whatever mm -hmm. it is, journalism, Mm -hmm. anthropology you can convert mm -hmm. it to nursing. you can convert it to mm -hmm. nothing so you can okay. just do like a master's degree okay. for two years only right. yeah oh, that's good to know yeah, yeah. all righty so you got here i got to australia <laughs> land of oh, milk no, and honey to australia. tell us you know the airport experiences i think my oh airport my god was really bad. i'm was telling you the airport experience. I wasn't even in tears for some reason. My, let Ooh. me tell you guys, people cry in airports. My family mm. did not even shed a tear. Of course, I had a whole matato of people coming to, <laughs> to see me off. But nobody cried. And myself, I didn't even cry, man. Oh I don't even know. Maybe these people don't love me too much. But anyway, my airport experience, yeah, I'm saying goodbyes. Nobody cried and I never cried because I knew, come on. I didn't get cried I mean. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was my first uh, airplane, yeah, international, international mm. flight. So mm. I was anxious, you know. Mm. I had googled what not to pack, what to pack, oh. and all that. But the anxiety, man. So yeah, I got onto the flight. My flight was going to South Africa and then to Australia. Uh -huh. So to South Africa, everything was okay. I could understand the accent very well. But then it came to the big flight from South Africa to Perth. Mm -hmm. And that's where my ears stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> Let's blame the air cabin <laughs> pressure. It's just as if your ears are blocked yes. because of that. So when I landed at the airport, I couldn't hear anything. The English was so different. I couldn't even hear what the, you know, the airport security guys were saying. So I had to actually tell them, please slow down. <laughs> Let me understand what you're saying. It was that bad. <laughs> when you're a girl, you need to understand what you're saying. <laughs> Can you imagine if coming from the village? Mm. It was that bad. But yeah, okay. with time, I started getting better. Mm. It wasn't so, so much of a hassle for me in the mm. airport anyway. Oh, there was so many stops. It was just a one stop checking my property. And then that's yeah. it. Then, thank God, I had my friend who picked oh. me from the airport. Faith, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. She picked me from the airport, and she's the one who hosted me. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. She did host me for two years, 
And this girl walked the journey with me. She's the one who got a rental property for me. She did orientation in school for me. She taught me how to use the bus, how to use the train. She actually mm -hmm. helped me get my first car. She did everything for me. I'm, wow. I'm that wow. blessed to have her in my life. Oh, yes. Thank you. Faith, right? Faith, yes. Oh, good. Yeah. Good on you. Because sometimes I, when I'm speaking to people and I, I encourage a lot of people, I always see, obviously, you need to have somebody um, that could do various things, you know, like a destiny lifter. It yeah. could be somebody that's just going to mentor you, mm -hmm. even even if you're an adult and you know your way. It's always good to have that someone and to keep that relationship going sure. because, obviously, um, yeah, in the long run, it, it is a beautiful thing to have yeah. a friend. Yeah, especially True. Oh. in Australia. True. And that leads me to, you know, my next question, which is um, sort of, you know, faith has shown you around. Yeah. You've um, seen where uni is going to be. Mm. You have your public transport pass and stuff like that. Yeah. What was your biggest challenge of settling in Australia? My biggest challenge of settling in Australia was basically after faith said goodbye to me, now go to the world. <laughs> that was and the that biggest. was after how long ago? <laughs> Just like two weeks. Oh, wow. Yes. So my biggest mm -hmm. challenge was actually using the bus and the train, honestly, at first. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, I just couldn't comprehend. My mind just couldn't. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I couldn't understand some, like the English, there was slang. just some, this slang. slang, I just, yeah, mm -hmm. all this slang was a bit too much for me. I couldn't understand for a while. Mm -hmm. Getting a job wasn't so hard for oh, me. It was just okay. the anxiety of the first day, you know, where you have anxiety, like, oh my God, will I be able to do what yeah. they need to do and all. But yeah. after the first day, it was... I think that's it was, normal for yeah. a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me, getting a job was really not hard because within that qualification from home, mm -hmm. I didn't have to do any certificates to get a job. Mm -hmm. You just had to apply whatever you want to work and then you're good to go. Yeah. yeah. I think I've covered in one of my videos, you know, life adjusting abroad and my challenges and what happened. Mm -hmm. And what struck out for me a lot was the fact that, you know, it can be really lonely here, although mm -hmm. I moved oh. with my family. Yeah. So I can't imagine how you are lucky. So oh tell my me, God. tell me how you are the luckiest man. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is another topic by itself. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was really, really tough for me, especially mm -hmm. the fact that I had never stayed away from my kids and my mm -hmm. partner for this long and mm -hmm. now I am 10,000 miles away from home you know it was really tough mm -hmm. I, I couldn't even eat I couldn't know I didn't know how to even cook like I was like why would I cook I don't even have anyone to enjoy mm -hmm. my food you know I don't even talk to anybody <laughs> how old were the kids then? Uh, I think my, my, my son the last one was four and then oh, five wow. and then my daughter maybe roughly around eight oh, I would wow. say yeah so they were really quite young. So it was just about, it was now time for me to introduce online parenting, video calls. I was trying to do video calls as much as I can, but with the, uh, you know, the time difference, it mm. was really not really working mm. because most of the time, by the time they leave school, I'm already like sleeping or by the time, you know, it was a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. And of course, sometimes in online parenting, you can't even get like the emotion of this person. Mm -hmm. You don't know if, mm -hmm. if they're really happy to see you or they just want to get rid of you. It was hard for the kids as well, okay. I would say. Yeah. All right. So, and um, what are some of the highlights? And what is one thing that makes you today not regret and say it was all worth it about coming to live in Australia? Money. <laughs> Money. No, 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 doctor. Stop laughing. This is a serious thing, like for real. Because yeah, I, I remember I back home, really. We used to mm -hmm. live like end month to end month. You don't even have like 2,000, you know? You don't mm -hmm. even have like 2,000 left or nothing. Mm -hmm. There was nothing left, basically. Mm -hmm. Like your salary will come in one week, it's done, and you have to think about how you're going to finish the rest of the month. So Just basically, yeah, I know. And especially with kids. But here in Australia, it's actually a little bit easier because you can make a little bit of savings. Mm -hmm. As much as life is a little bit high, but you can still make a little bit of savings. That's true. Like, yeah. you know, and sometimes money actually makes someone feel a little bit secure, you know, mm -hmm. in the sense that you know that if my child wants to eat yogurt or something, I can actually buy it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. At home, you'll be like, no, yogurt is for end month, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was really hard. So for me, one of the highlights is that, of course. Yeah. And another highlight, I will say, it's in Australia, it's really beautiful. Mm. And the housing, it's, mm. it's much yeah, better compared to home. Mm. 
in the sense that in back home you used to live like a two bedroom house, so squeezed mm. together, no playground, no nothing. Basically, you're living like on seventh floor, sixth mm. floor. That was imagine. very, very, yeah, they were not very the best. But here in Australia, you live like in your own compound. The field is just like two minutes away for your kids. You and have a garage. You have, you oh my God, garage. Gar 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 yeah, that's a, that's a good one, yes. That's what I love. <laughs> Those are the things, to be honest. That's what I wanted, you know. And yeah. you have a car with a reverse gear, with a reverse camera. Yes. Those are the yeah. things, but yeah, So for me, those yeah. are the biggest highlights anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. And um, yeah, I, I, I think I was <laughs> joking this morning with my kids and saying, you know these apples? I used to just see them in the shop. And I, I would try really in Nakumata, I yeah. remember, and I would <laughs> just pass the other side. Yeah. But now I can afford apples. I and, know, and that's you know, It's like they have to have them for school anyway. True, so yeah. Those are some of the small joys of living in Australia that true. you can afford the basic necessities. Very, very true. Yeah. Yeah. And um, what would be the challenges? I know you've mentioned a little bit about settling in. Yes. But what are some of the challenges that you would say? So that if somebody's coming to Australia, they are well prepared to know yeah. that this is what they're likely to encounter. Right. The challenges for me, especially, is when it comes to my family, like my sisters. I was very close to my sisters and my mm. parents. Yeah, and it was just true. like, I'm going to be like five hours drive and I'll be home, you know. Mm. I'm just going to be here. My sister needs me. I have mm. to do this and all That's that. True. But right now, the first time, especially when you bring your family in, they mm. don't have any other person they know. Before you get that sense of community and before you start interacting with people, mm. they didn't have so many people that mm -hmm. they can interact with. And even if the small people, like the small family we had, mm -hmm. it was hard, for, like the timing in Australia, maybe it's someone is working, it was hard for us to actually get that time that is working for both of us. Mm -hmm. So for me, that part where I needed my family to be surrendered as well mm. with the community yeah. was very, very hard for me. Because of course, we, we can't just be like the two, you know, just no, us. No, 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 yes, no, it's no, good, no. but we still need other people. Mm. You know, so that bit was a little bit challenging for us. Mm. But right now, at least we are a little quite settled. The rest of the things was slow, but it wasn't like big mm. things, you know, like my husband getting a job, my kids getting school. They were really easier processes because mm -hmm. after you get your permanent residency, mm -hmm. it's I think it's a little things, bit better. Like yes, mm -hmm. like even the school fees was a little bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Yeah. yeah, and that's something that you know for people that are contemplating coming to Australia with their kids. Yeah, uh, would you shed a little bit more light when you talk about the categories of school fees? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so like uh, I'm gonna just talk about the permanent residency mm -hmm. because that's what I am. Like mm -hmm. I will say. For my kids, I found the school fees for the kids, the, it has ma it was less, less mm -hmm. as a permanent residency. You were just basically, like to give an example, you could pay something like $300 in a year. Mm -hmm. And yet, if you don't have permanent residency, like if you've had a child and mm -hmm. you're under student visa, it's you could be paying something fees. as high as 8000 a year. Yeah, exactly. So you can imagine exactly. if I had three children mm -hmm. and I have to pay 8000 per child in a year, that's a little bit more for me compared mm -hmm. to here I'm paying 300 per child, yeah, yeah. you know? I think just to clarify what um, Cheryl is saying is obviously every visa category has its own school fees. Yes. So you'll find student visa, if you come with a child and you're on student visa, yeah. they automatically go on to the visa that you're on. Yes. So they will be on a student visa as well. So that mm -hmm. would mean they have to pay international student fees. Yeah. If you're a master's student, I think the fees is a little bit better, obviously. Yeah. And um, eventually, if you're on a work visa, there's a specific amount that you'll need to pay. And eventually, when you're a permanent resident, and we are mainly talking about mm -hmm. now public schools, because obviously the public schools, um, if you're a um, permanent resident, the fee is really Less. negligible, yeah. I must say. Mm -hmm. And obviously, um, as you continue living, you'll notice the differences. So we are not, you know, just a disclaimer, we, we, every visa that you're on, it's very important Different, to check. Yeah that um, the amount of school fees your kids will be paying, even yeah. as you contemplate moving with them. Yes. All right. So, Sherry, mm -hmm. what is some of the misconception people have about, li about you, but also about living in Australia? Misconception. Let me start with my friends and family back at home. Ah, mm. uh, they just think I have money in the account, like seated, doing <laughs> nothing, waiting for me. But you just <laughs> say you get more. I do get more. <laughs> But come on, you just can't wake up today and ask me for a hundred thousand like that, you know? I've worked hard for this money. 
of course, if it's something I'm willing to help, but there's mm -hmm. some things you just, you know, that's one of the misconceptions I will say they have. Mm -hmm. And sorry, what was your next question? Yeah, that was what is the misconception yeah. people have of you and also just of generally <laughs> living in Australia. And of course, they think we are not suffering, mm -hmm. like we are living like really, really, we are living large. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do have these small privileges, but sometimes we are actually you not have to living. Work for them. Yes, you have mm -hmm. to work for them. Mm -hmm. Like if you see the shifts that I'm working sometimes, and you know, we have to do night shift. Like right now, me and my husband, mm -hmm. we have to basically look for days, you know, that work together. But we can't sometimes even be in this, we can we might not see each other for like four days, like, you know, stay together for four days. Because, we, because someone it, has to be the kids. Someone so. has to be the kids mm -hmm. and someone has to be working. Mm -hmm. So they think we're living large, but at the end of the day, we are actually really working hard for mm -hmm. the little that we're getting. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And that's a very key thing that I always see. Um, this land that we are in, we are yeah. privileged because it has opportunities, but those opportunities need to be actively sought. Mm. So if you do a, a normal job, eight to four, you can definitely just do that and get something. But if you want to get and live comfortably, sometimes you have to go the extra mile. Yeah. And sometimes that's at an expense of something else. So it's just mm -hmm. a balance that we always are trying to do. Yeah. What are some of the culture shocks you, you, you experience settling in first mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a person and second as a registered nurse? Um, culture shock. It was just something as small as like, let's say, if I go to the shops, no one is talking to me. Or maybe you're somewhere you Sharing can't just keep. <laughs> you know, I am, I am this spontaneous, on, you know, outgoing person. I just like mm -hmm. talking to people. Mm -hmm. So maybe... You, no one is talking to me. Like back home, you'll be talking to everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. Someone you meet and you don't know them, but you can mm -hmm. still have a meaningful conversation or something. Mm -hmm. Here, everybody's just on walking the on the yeah. run or something like that. And another thing, in the shops, you have to like self-check. Toot, toot. I love yeah. that. <laughs> love that. <laughs> something Trish, like that. Yeah, I, wasn't, I wasn't very happy about, you know, doing really? my own fuel at the Oh station. yeah! Did oh my like God! That? I was like, yeah, it's empowerment. I was like, oh, yeah, look I at can't you. do it I, for me. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that one is different as uh, well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, just. I still, I still, <laughs> I still miss you know that you know when you go to the just petrol station and yeah. then you just sit, eat, full, full tank, you, <laughs> and then they check your tires, your yes. pressure, oh, and then you just drive off. It was hard, actually, especially being the only woman, and you're like, this is a man's job. I mean, but come then, on. But you're empowered. Like you, you, have to, <laughs> you have to do it. What about at workplace? Workplace, it was very, very strange mm. because I found before I, I knew my colleagues very well, no one was actually talking to me. Mm. It was the patient. It was either me and the patients. But you know the way you sit in the yeah. nurses' stations and chit chat a little bit. There was nothing like that until you get used to it. That's when you actually start. They start mm. getting into it. But mm. back home, whether someone is actually new or not, you'll actually be chit chatting. Whether that's you true. know, but here no one will actually yeah. talk to you. Yeah, that was a, a little bit hard for me, but yeah. we got Did used you find to it. it strange because one of the things that I said in one of my other videos is, you know, sometimes I used to feel like my work friends are my work friends. Mm. Like as soon as you leave work, then that's it. You know, sometimes you know in Africa you used to like checking in on yes. friends. Oh my God, that's the thing. In Africa, my work friends were my real friends. Exactly. Here, my work friends are work. Like exactly. they, no one will call you until like you know, unless you you've gotten really close. Exactly, <laughs> or unless you've gotten very close. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nothing like baby. You know, back home when someone will get a baby, your work will come and you guys will be cooking here. They'll be like, oh, you got a baby. Congratulations. That's it. Yeah. We yeah. had a very nice community back home. Really. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the biggest thing I think mm -hmm. about living mm -hmm. in Africa yeah. or, um, you know, it's just that sense of community, True. that sense of people being there for one another, yeah. loving in on one another. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I guess this, these are the changes. I mean, and sometimes I joke and I say, could it be because people are just busy with their lives as well? They don't have extra support. People are looking yeah. out for themselves. So whether it's just something that we have to learn to live with. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have mm -hmm. to learn to live with True. that yeah. simple fact. The other thing, I, because I work in hospital yeah. as well, mm -hmm. I, what, what's your take on, you know, this, you know, sometimes at work, you know, I see nurses always checking things together. Was that different for you? 
it was a little bit different because back home in Kenya, let's say at something as simple as cannulation and starting some fluids and all that, you will get a patient you've cannulated if you even started fluids on it on the patient. But here in Australia, you have to check with the doctor first, then mm -hmm. check with two nurses. Can you this normal saline? But it has, it's actually not too bad if you think about it, like in the sense that we are protecting the patients. Mm. No matter what is actually good for us to double check, mm. you protecting know. Protecting yourself as well. And myself mm. as well, my license as well. So mm. it's actually good, mm. but it is making work a little bit slower. Mm. You know what I mean? Because sometimes we just want the... <laughs> it is good and bad, but yeah. 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 Mm. And I think it brings in the issue of like your scope of practice. Yeah. Because... I have seen in my area of, you know, work is, mm -hmm. you know, you need to know your scope, what you can do. There are a lot of things that you could still, I could do at home, like, mm. you know, you know, super pubics and stuff like that. I yeah. can't really do here because mm. my scope of practice is not what it was then. Yeah. And even as nurses, there are yeah. things that ENs can do, and uh, there are things RNs, that RNs yeah. can do, there are things yeah. that clinical nurses can do. So it's quite important to stay within your scope True. so that you also protect it under APRA. Yeah. So if you're a nurse that's starting out, you may mm. find this to be one of, you know, the shocks that you go like, mm, mm. I have to wait for the doctor before I start up the fluid. True, yeah. And even yourself as a doctor, you're like, mm, she was waiting for me. The patient <laughs> is looking shocked, like blood pressure. I know. Just pump up the fluids. I know. But with time, you realize that it's yeah. just, you know, mm. the way of life and you go True. along with it. Mm. Yeah. All right, so um, even as we move towards winding off, mm -hmm. what is, you know, what are some of the lessons you've learned, some of the things that you would like to tell somebody today that was thinking about coming to Australia as a nurse? Um, for me, if you're really coming, wanting to come to Australia as a nurse, I will say, please come. Mm. There's so many opportunities and yeah, if this is what you really want, just know it's going to be challenging sometimes. Mm. But if you really want it, I would say just come. It's much mm. better than home. Mm. Yeah, okay. All right. it is much better than home. So definitely, um, guys, if you're contemplating coming to Australia as a nurse, there you go. Cheryl has been there. She's done it. And she's encouraging us just to come. Yes, please, That's how come. Cheryl <laughs> So, uh, one, any final advice that I may have left out? Um, final advice. I think we've covered most of it, really. Oh, yeah. Really. yeah. Cool. So, even as we finish, um, I think having Shirley on set um, has taught us quite a few things. Mm -hmm. You know, the biggest one is there are various pathways of coming to Australia as a nurse. Yeah. So there is, you know, for the younger ones, there's a bachelor's degree that you can come and do. For those who are already experienced back in their countries, mm -hmm. there is, you know, the conversion or the OBA pathway that you can come through and do. And then obviously there's the master's um, pathway yeah. that um, you can use to become a nurse in Australia. It does have its advantages, yeah. uh, like Cheryl mentioned. And the biggest one being the fact that you can be economically sort of stable and yeah. in your job. There are opportunities, lots of opportunities for nurses, mm -hmm. opportunities for growth as well, I'm assuming. Yes. And then obviously, um, the one thing that I always say, and I'm glad that you've mentioned it, is, you know, the support. Because parenting in Australia can, can be a bit challenging. Oh, yeah. And obviously, you know, having the support of your partner and your loved one. And um, she's introduced something interesting, which is online parenting that you may have to do <laughs> as you wait for your family to come yeah. through. Mm -hmm. Not easy. <laughs> Not easy. But has to be done. <laughs> you have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> and even as you wait for your family. So um, we'll try to leave in a link or two and I'll probably um, in future be looking at the various pathways in, uh, intensively. But there we go, guys. If you've been thinking about coming to Australia as a nurse, I want you to look at Cheryl. <laughs> I want you to, to look at Cheryl and see how glowing. <laughs> it's just because she loves uh, oh, living here. Yeah. She enjoys living here and her family as well does the same. So thank you so much, Cheryl, for You're welcome, sharing Dr. your story. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.